up we have Drake London, the wide receiver out of USC, who was an interesting player for me personally because one of the things that I've considered with my wide receiver grading scale a little bit here over the past year since the last draft is I thought about the question, am I a little bit biased against big receivers? Now, what do I mean by that? So how my scale works for those who are unfamiliar, and then we'll get right into <laughs> Drake London because it all ties in, trust me. How I do my scale is, apologies that's not on the screen, but I, I weight each category uh, and each trait, ability, things that players are able to do on the field based on what I determine as importance. And I give out points accordingly, right? So for me, I give out 20 points for route running, 15 points for your speed and quickness, uh, 10 points for your hands, consistency, another 10 for your ability to catch the ball in traffic, 10 for your ability to uh, track the ball into your body, your body control, 10 for your rack ability, 10 for your release, 5 for your block and physicality, and then kind of a catch-all five and five for your just raw testing and intangible size and athleticism. So one of the things that you see out of a lot of these tall, big receivers is that they struggle to create separation, <laughs> right? Which is the uh, route running portion primarily. And then they also obviously are not that fast either. And they, a lot of the times you have guys like Allen Robinson and Kenny Galladay and Mike Williams who rely almost solely then on these contested catches, these catches in traffic. But for me, for me at least, I think that getting open and winning with your route, right, confusing the defensive back is the most sustainable way to get open. It doesn't matter who you're going against. If they turn one way and you're going the other, you're going to win. So I give, those, I give people... Uh, 20 points based on their route running ability then i think there's the next tier for if you're a good athlete you are more often going to win but at the same time you could face another good athlete on the other side of you and then you're not guaranteed to win so i give 15 points off that and then if you're neither able to do either of those things uh create separation with your route running or with your athleticism then it comes down to the 10 points for your ability to Hall in the ball in traffic, right? And that's where a lot of these big guys fall. But what made London so interesting, as I tie it all back in together here, is that I kind of expected going in that, oh, this guy is a big guy. Like, oh, man, am I going to be low on him? And the absolute opposite happened. <laughs> I was I was actually very impressed for his route running at his size, for his speed and particularly quickness. Maybe not the speed so much, but the quickness at his size the first note i wrote was pretty quick feet for his height and athletic profile i thought that was i thought that was rather um i don't want to say interesting but it was rather refreshing right because so many of these big guys are just big and stiff and i thought that drake london was by and large anything but so in that regard i gave him uh 16.25 in route running whereas you know, some of these other big guys that I've done in years past, I've given 10s to or 8s to, right, out of 20 points, and that kills your grade. But I really did think Drake London could run just about everything in the route tree. We didn't necessarily see it all, but we saw the foot quickness to where I'm confident in his ability to do it all. And then I also thought that he did a rather good job sort of playing that chess game and realizing, like, hey, maybe I'm not the absolute fastest guy, so instead I have to get these players out of position. And I thought he did that very well at times. Um, particularly in terms of like the vertical stem making everything look like he was pushing the pushing the field deep and then just snapping things off at the last second whether it was a curl route a comeback route an out route right these uh, shallow routes that he made to look like deep verticals for the first four five six seven steps and he was winning a lot on those and catching a lot of balls on those in fact one of the notes that I made about his production was it was kind of absurd he he played eight games and he had five of them with more than 10 catches. And of those eight games, he had six of them with more than 130 yards. So he was really getting force-fed the ball here in USC. But I, I don't think it was just, oh, he's the only guy, let me throw it to him. I think it was really, like, he is getting open, <laughs> right? So we're going to throw it to him then. He is, even when he's not open, he's still able to catch the ball. In terms of that contested catch ability, he can climb the ladder, go up, and... Uh, you know, high point the ball over a defender because he is six foot five, two hundred ten pounds. I actually believe he came in at the combine six foot four. USC listed him at six foot five, but regardless, I think you you catch my drift in that regard, right? So he's getting open a large percentage of snaps, and then even the ones he's not open, he has a great percentage 
uh, chance of hauling in as well. And in that regard, I thought he was a very interesting player. Uh, there were, in terms of some of the negatives that I wrote here, honestly not a ton. Um, but I thought that when... Uh, one thing that I thought was his release at the line of scrimmage. I, I thought that he did a good job varying things up at times because that's one worry with some of these bigger, slower, per se, guys is that they're just going to get pressed to death even though they have the strength to overcome it. They don't have the quickness to overcome it. I thought that London did a good job varying up his releases, but then at some points he would kind of fall back into uh, just starting to do the same thing over and over. And then at that point uh, you could see him at risk for getting pressed right even by smaller guys that he had you know five inches on you could just see at times um when players weren't scared for say a quick outside release or something instantly breaking inside or you know whatever it was with his footwork if he wasn't trying to work them and work their angles and leverage right off the snap then it seemed as though he could have some problems and that's something i'm a little bit worried about at the next level um I, I mentioned there wasn't a ton of variation necessarily in his routes. I'm, I might be projecting a little bit there because, like I said, a lot of it was the vertical, right, beating guys down, downfield along the sidelines, and then what could he do off of the vertical shallow? There wasn't a ton of intermediate work, uh, which isn't, isn't unusual for these bigger guys, but it would have been something uh, nice to see, in my opinion. So I took a little bit off for that, as I mentioned. Um, some other grades I gave him 9.5 out of 10 in tracking and body control. I thought that was one of his best areas uh, for being such a big guy. He was really fluid in terms of, you know, in the air, being able to contort his body along the sidelines, being able to uh, make these toe tap grabs and, you know, at the same time being able to climb the ladder and make these high point grabs. It was just really, really impressive from my perspective because I've, I've seen a lot of discourse. They're like, oh, he's just a, you know, he's like a, a small tight end almost at wide receiver you know he's he's such a big wide receiver he's just a tight end and I did not see that at all I thought he was certainly uh, more athletic than just about every tight end in that regard so while he might have tight end height and you know some of uh, you know a tight end's ball skills in terms of being able to you know box box guys out like he's a power forward in basketball right he did a very good job of that when it came to some of those contested catches underneath, right? He snaps off those quick curl routes and then he's got a defender on his back hip. Well, you got to work through a six foot four, six foot five, 210 pound frame. And a lot of guys just weren't able to do it. Uh, London did a very nice job there. I, I thought one of the notes I had was obviously the massive catch radius. We kind of talked about that already. Um, I said, very impressive in traffic uh, so far in terms of staving off contact. Like I mentioned, the boxing guys out very good there it just a nuanced game i said he did a good job attacking dvs in their blind spots while pushing vertical uh did a good job varying his releases generally at the last scrimmage as i already mentioned just a lot of positive notes here that i made uh on him and then another one that i i forgot to mention was impressive after the catch does a good job uh transitioning from receiver to runner and getting vertical quickly now he's not as i said the fastest guy in the world um, he did actually suffer a season an season ending ankle fracture so we didn't get to see him at the combine and things of that nature uh, but as far as what I read it seems as though he should be he should be ready to go here rather shortly he was actually scheduled for a pro day that they had to uh, push back a little bit but if he's even close to being on schedule uh, to being back for the start of the regular season I I'm not overly worried in that regard in terms of the injury but pre-injury at least um was was very solid uh, i will say after the catch uh in particular he's just a tough guy to tackle right and that comes with the size and once you get the size rumbling and stumbling down the hill you know he, he was a big guy and a tough guy to bring down uh, especially for some of these dbs like i said that he had such a such a big height advantage on uh, the only real negatives that I, I didn't talk about necessarily were in terms of his physicality. That was one thing I docked him on a little bit because, you know, he wasn't overly tough or physical for his size, particularly as a run blocker. That was a little bit not disheartening because like they were they were throwing him into situations to block and he was willing to stick his nose in there and try at least. But um was kind of leaving his hips back behind him and wasn't 
wasn't driving through with his feet, would stop his feet on contact at times, things of that nature. You know, I don't want to say easily coachable, but, um, you know, because that's more of like a want to thing than anything else, but he didn't look necessarily horrible. And, you know, at times they're using him, uh, you know, motioning him into a formation, having him try and crack down on linebackers or lead block through a hole at times. And while I wouldn't necessarily recommend that at the next level, it was something that at least he has some experience doing. So all in all, uh, the only two grades I didn't mention were size, which I gave, I did give him a five out of five on size at six, four, two, ten. I thought that was fair, especially compared to some of the other grades that I've given in years past. You know, last year was a, you know, a rather small wide receiver draft class. So maybe I was a little bit too generous with those guys. But if I'm giving six, two and six, three guys, four and four and a half, so I, I felt like Drake London here at six, four, six, five was definitely worthy. Um, a little bit light for his size, but I thought that that lightness is probably one of the big reasons for the the quicker feet than I necessarily uh, would have expected. And then in terms of just general athleticism, because he didn't test, this was more of an eye test grade. I gave him a three out of five uh, for a lot of the things that he was able to do at his size, but then some of obviously the drawbacks like we mentioned in terms of just the raw flat speed and acceleration. There wasn't always a ton of tempo in his game, right? Like, um, there wasn't like that second, you know, that second burst in terms of, you know, he, he's running fast and then, oh, you know, the ball's in the air. Now let me close in on it and hit that sort of second gear almost. Like he, he didn't really have a second gear. It was generally one speed, but for him, uh, with some of the angles he was working and, you know, with his size, he made it work, no question. So all in all, that came out to 81.25. Multiply that by the position premium for being a wide receiver. And as you see on the screen, 84.5 currently currently my number two overall wide receiver behind Jamison Williams now uh, there are a couple guys I haven't graded yet that uh, I'm not 100% sure if I'll get around to prior to the draft but um, it'll be tough to beat it, it'll be tough to beat because at this rate uh, I only have two first round graded wide receivers in terms of Jamison and Drake London I, I didn't have Garrett Wilson or Alave as quote unquote first round grades just they were just both underneath it by a by a slight margin but um if those guys aren't first round grades who knows what the you know what the the rest of the pack has to offer but i was i was definitely uh pleasantly surprised by what drake had to offer currently he's in the top 15 on my board uh pretty easily in fact i believe he is he might be i don't have it in front of me but out of the 80 guys i've watched he very well might be top 10 actually now i haven't graded all the quarterbacks or uh, you know, many of the defensive backs, I'll say that. So, you know, maybe toss a sauce gardener in there. I haven't got around to him yet and some guys like that, but, uh, regardless, I, I would feel pretty comfortable taking him just about anywhere in the first round outside of those top, you know, five, six, seven, eight, nine picks. I, I think he's, he's right in that conversation there. And the fact that my wide receiver one, Jamison Williams is coming off of a serious injury and I don't have the medical results, obviously, uh, you could make an argument that, he should be the first wide receiver off the board. And I would definitely hear that. And while I'm not going to come down on one side or the other, because like I said, I don't know the status of Jameson's injury or London's for that matter. Uh, it's definitely something that I think would be in consideration if I was one of these GMs making a pick here on Thursday. So with that being said, if you guys did enjoy, and I've went a little bit longer on this one than I wanted to, so hopefully you did. If you did, leave a thumbs up, subscribe to all those great things that we are always in the loop with my future videos because for this one, I'm mic'd up, now I'm mic'ing out. Peace, guys. I'll see you next time.